Great, thank you. So my name is Stephen, and we're going to do a joint presentation here. Jose is also going to be uh, talking, and we're actually hoping to do a bit more of a discussion-oriented session uh, rather than necessarily a standard uh, So this is just, uh, we're going to talk a bit about programmable debuggers. Uh, I'm going to give a brief overview of Dragon, uh, which is a really great plugin that we have at the moment. Jose is going to talk a little bit about uh, Oh, and we will then we'll try to just get some feedback on what people are looking for out there with others. Um, so to start off, what Dragon is, if anybody here, or I don't know how familiar people are, but Dragon uh, is a program that we are programmable in the, in the Python sense of the word. So it's just a Python library, um, and it has the ability to debug uh, C applications, kernel, and user space. Um, and it primarily targets the Linux kernel, though, uh, because there's a whole bunch of helpers that are written especially for the kernel, and um, it's constantly growing in its helpers, it's constantly growing in its, in its abilities. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what it looks like to use Dragon, because we're not going to be doing a ton of, of content on each particular debugger, but just the broad overview. Uh, if, you're, if you're using Dragon, you get a little variable here called prom. This represents the program you're debugging, and uh, it's, you can use it to look up a variable name or something like slash caches, which in a kernel is a, 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 list, a, a list head that links together all of our uh, slash caches. And then uh, Dragon has a whole bunch of Linux kernel helpers in particular. Uh, there are some more detailed about slash caches, but just, just for the purposes of example, uh, we have some this for the gentry is something we're all familiar with, and it's, it's, it tries to stick as close to what you're familiar with in the kernel. Uh, just a providing the, the type, the pointer, the field name, linking everything together. And then from there, you, you have the ability to do stuff like uh, printing out attributes. Uh, these, each, each of these cache objects down here is just a, a Python object that is modeled after the struct KMM cache. So, you can access the field name just like you would uh, a Python field name. Uh, you can use data structures much in the same way that you would in Python or C, except that you know Python doesn't really have pointers in the sense of C, so there's a little bit of, of difference there. Um, so that's kind of the overview of what Dragon does, and we, we can talk a lot about that. But just for, for folks who uh, have been using lots of other debuggers out there, why you might choose to use Dragon. Uh, if you're a Crash or PyKnup user, uh, something I find really helpful about, about Dragon is the, the documentation of the API and the consistency. If you're already familiar with Python, uh, you get a lot, of, a, a lot of familiarity with the language and a lot of documentation, which is awesome. Um, if, you're, if you're a GDB user, then you'll notice that the API is maybe a bit higher level because it's focusing on, on things like program stru data structures, values, uh, accessing them like a Python object. And so it's it maybe a little bit higher level than, than the Python APIs provided by GDB. But on um, the other hand, it doesn't provide things like features. You know, pause a program, uh, step through things. I'll get to that in a moment. Um, also, you know, if you're just using raw GDB, uh, Dragon's going to provide you a lot of kernel helpers, things like uh, accessing slab caches, Trawling through the file system, looking up paths in the entry cache, things like that, uh, and a lot more. Um, and that's what's growing. But and then and finally, um, it's fully standalone from Crash and GDB, which is kind of nice. I just find it a little simpler as, as someone who's not really familiar with the GDB and util source code. I know that that can be a, uh, can be difficult for me to parse, but uh, so so Dragon just has has its own uh, set of code that. So, and then of course, why not to use Dragon? Because I never want to provide a, a one-sided argument here. Um, Dragon doesn't have as many kernel op options yet as something like Crash. Crash has been around for so long, and you've got things to do just a ton of a ton of operations from listing out processes, uh, files, entries, etc. And Dragon <laughs> is always growing in that way, and it's always going to keep growing. But it doesn't have as many. And the, the other thing 
things that it's not necessarily a debug error oriented around stopping and starting a, a task. Certainly not even for user space tasks, and especially not for the kernel, which is kind of tough to achieve anyway. Um, that's a problem. But that's just that's my yeah. review yeah. of Dragon, and then I think we're gonna have a zip mode here and give us uh, a bit of an overview of uh, code. And then we're just gonna try to turn it over to folks who discuss what uh, what you're looking for that we're gonna do. Like YouTube is not handled by this property. It's handled by a central organization. Right, so um, yeah. So um, th thanks for the overview of Dragon. Uh, I don't know how is your computer generally familiar with Dragon? No, well, but we got a nice overview. So, um, uh, now I'm gonna talk about Poke exactly, but about the combination of GDB and Poke, right? Which is slightly different. So, first of all. Oh, it's probably you, people that want to the site. Oh, it's not the end of the YouTube channel, wherever it is. And they don't come yeah. Here. So, <laughs> but we don't control it. First of all, this is a, this, this little project is, is sort of exploratory in nature, right? I think it, 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 it can work and it's, it's fun to work in. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like, uh, Dragon is much more nature and evolves, right? At least for the moment. So, um, what is GNU Poke? Poke is a relatively new binary editor, which is, in reality, is, is much more than a binary editor, because you can use it, you know, for what you use binary editors usually for, like for doing, you know, some basic uh, poking of bytes and bits and whatever around. Um, but it's much more than that, because it is designed in a way that you can actually define your structures interactively, and uh, is you know in real time, yeah? and you can book them you know uh, immediately. Um, there you have uh, the link to the web page. There is there are a lot of videos around that include the reports that you can watch. That I'm going to repeat them here because it will be boring and we have no time. So this is something I will be talking about. Uh, uh, you know, uh, more in, in the Caldron conference, which is later this week, the Kuntus Caldron conference. But basically, uh, one of the things I did was to integrate POC in GDB via this lead POC, which is the shared object that implements the POC incremental compiler and whatnot, right? And what is that giving to you, to the GDB user? There is a new command called POC, and then after this command, you can write any POC expression. Any POC expression. So uh, almost everything that is supported. So this full procedural uh, statically typed uh, programming language that Bob provides is available if it's in the YouTube stream. Mm -hmm. um, the integration is, is has to be a little bit uh, sophisticated. So from both programs, you can actually access GDP C code. And then a very nice thing is that you can translate any GDP type into both types, right? And the GDP types can be uh, where are those types coming from? From DOR, yeah. or from CDF, yeah. or from BTF, or the, I don't know if you support BTF in GDP. I don't think that for the moment, no. I don't think that. Um, but CDF, yes. Um, so, yeah, basically, it makes both in full power available to the DDB user. That's it. Uh, you can find it in that branch in the upstream DDB repository. It's not merged yet because we have to change the Rados collector because Guy uses the spoil conservative one too, and there is a condition. So, Dragon. Is this accurate? Yeah, so basically, um, um, there is something called it Dragon. You mentioned that, that Dragon is basically, it's, just, it's really just a Python library, but that's not really like that, is it? Because Dragon, you have this lead Dragon library, which is written in C, which contains all the code that is necessary to actually uh, read the, the kernel binary to read the core file, the uh, K core, 
Actually, the coding leaf dragon is very kernel aware and very sophisticated because then it goes to the proc directory, uh, PG tables, is that what it's called? Uh, VM core info, you know. Yeah, okay. It does some sort of, uh, of tricky things, you know, to get the information from the kernel that it needs to work. This is not a Python library, but okay. So, at the other side, you have the, the, the dragon helpers, which are Python grabbers abstractions, right, of the kernel data structures, right? Like linked lists and that kind of stuff. This is accurate, okay. So, I'm nice, nice, really nice. But this is what I propose instead, right? So, um, you have VM Linux, the same way, the same thing than before, and the K-Core, for example. So, instead of lib dragon, let's use GDP. Because GDP is, is a debugger, right? I will talk a little bit more about this before. And not reinventing the wheel, right? GDP knows how to read programs, how to read core files. It knows about memory regions, segments, whatever, stack trace. Then on the other side, uh, GDB integrates with POC via libpoc, which means that the POC programs that you can execute in GDB can poke or can read and write to the inferior of GDB. This works for user land programs, but also it works for the kernel, right? Um, and then instead of the Dragon helpers, you have you have the equivalent in POC, which we call pickles. Pickles are POC programs which implement some particular domain, like a file format. We have a pickle for L files. We have a pickle for TCP and so on, right? Um, okay, so I already said GDB. If do you need a debugger? Well, use one. We have one. You don't have to re-implement it again in LibDragon, right? You don't have to use it, right? So GDB knows about programs, object files, core dump files, memory segment, and whatnot. Um, however. However, LibDragon is much better than GDB when it comes to actually get the stuff from the kernel. But we can make GDB better at that too. And that's something that in this project it will have to happen, right? Like using this PG table to read memory segments that are not in the K core and so on. Um, on the other side, um, you also, also mentioned that um, Exposing program values naturally in Python. Now, I wonder if that is even possible to do naturally, right? I mean, the, the reason why in POC we took the, the works of designing a domain-specific language with a lot of love, as I put here, is because the, 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 the general purpose programming languages, and Python is one of those, it's included in this, they are not really that well suited to describe, for example, memory layouts, you know, and data structures. They are not. Okay, you will have to take my word for this if you don't know POC, but you can go and look at how POC works, the language and everything. And um, it is a language which is particularly and painfully designed to that purpose, for that purpose. And that really makes a difference. Um, This is an example, right? Well, this is just a, a little example that used with the slab, you know, I mean, um, well, so, um, GDB will play the, 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 the role of LibDragon, right? So you don't need LibDragon anymore. You can use GDB, that it exists already. And then instead of the helpers, Python helpers, you use the pickles. So the idea is that you have, I have written, written a, little, a few kernel pickles, like kernel specific, specific pickles that you use in this GDB plus poke uh, thing uh, for the kernel in particular. But also, this will be a poke type struct, you know, for linked list in the kernel, right? With a method for is empty, another for is singular, and these kind of things. But also, and I don't, th I don't see how Dragon can actually provide something similar to this. Also, poke comes with a, a big set of general purpose pickles for all sorts of things. Right, like like instruction sets, like uh, L files, TOF information, CTF information, BTF information, file system, master boot records, you know, all sort of formats and protocols and TCP and UDP and whatnot that people write pickles for them, 
write poco code for them because they want to, to, to use the binary editor with them. Now, with this way of doing this, you can also use those in case you, you want to poke at this kind of data in memory buffers, so as payload, so to say, in the kernel. So let's say that in the kernel you have a buffer where you process TCP packets, right? And in them, some sort of payload for which you don't have C extracts defined in the kernel sources. How do you debug them? Well, you can use a debugger or Dragon to dump a memory, but um, um, with, with this solution based on poke, you can use all the plethora of pickles with writing around uh, for the kernel debugging too. I think that's nice and hopefully practical. And now this is the last one for discussion. And this, this is for discussion, not just for poke, but also for dragon. So there are dragon helpers and poke pickles, right? Now, I will be very curious to know, other than the existing helpers implemented in Dragon, what will be the kernel data structures that the kernel hackers will find useful for debugging the kernel with this kind of debuggers, right? On one side. And also the payloads, right? Um, if you debug the kernel, what kind of payloads, I don't know, USB, TCP packets, will you find useful for kernel debugging? And, um, and yeah, that's it. Any? I was just going to come up for discussion as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, at the moment on ARM64, I'm rewriting our stack trace. Can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, on L64, I'm rewriting our stack tracing code, and I found that trying to use GDB to do stack tracing, uh, it doesn't like some of the funky things that we're doing in the kernel. Um, and I'm planning on changing it so it will like it even less. Um, <laughs> so the ability to write a custom like information for doing stack tracing would actually be quite interesting. And I don't know whether that also applies to x86 with people using... Uh, uh, Orc. Orc, that's the one, yeah. yeah. Um, so from the Dragon perspective, Dragon has a couple different unwinder implementations, kind of like what you see in the kernel. Um, so it has frame pointer unwinds. It also has an orc unwinder. So hypothetically, if there were a CTF frame unwinder or a ARM64 particular unwinder, the, the, it's pluggable in that way. So, so it would be an option. And I have to imagine that there are similar GDB options Say. Well, GDB has uh, stack tracers, yes, but I don't think it has a stack tracer for org, but uh, probably... It, uh, yeah, specifically, I, kn I know that the way ARM64 kernel works, the GDB stack tracer does not like it at all because it doesn't understand that we have a discontinuous set of stacks and just terminates early. Well, you see, that would be an advantage of Dragon in this case, yeah. because if we have, if we use POC with GDB, um, we can't put anything in GDB, right? I mean, GDB is a general purpose debugger. So even if we make it to work better with the kernel, um, maybe Dragon has that advantage that you can write in Glib Dragon, right, in C. Uh, maybe you don't have to convince so many people, basically, to put the stuff there, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, also one comment. I was working on a GDP or a project in GDP a couple of years ago to integrate kernel debugging there for S390, and it was exactly the same problem that having multiple stacks didn't work out for GDP. And maybe one question, how do you, or in POKE, how do you work with memory corruption? So in case you don't read the information you're expecting, will it just go haywire or... Oh, if the, if the information is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we support, I mean, when you define data structures in POKE, you also define, you also include um, 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 integrity, integrity in a quite sophisticated way. And then you map those types in some uh, storage, like it could be memory or file. And we support strict mapping and non-strict mapping. So POKE has facilities for you to to, to actually edit corrupted data. Because it's, the idea is to, is focus is used in reverse engineering, that kind of things. When you are trying to discover what, what, what is there. And sometimes you have to, to develop your formats like uh, discovering progressively and to work with invalid data. So yeah, 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 it's possible. Yeah. 
Uh, so I actually spend some time in GDB. Usually my workflow involves attaching it to an instance of QMU. So I'm kind of interested in maybe GDB uh, server protocol clients kind of thing. Um, I, I find myself using um, config GDB scripts a lot. And I find that I, in my experience, I suspect that they regress and it's not always clear that other people notice. I don't have the skills, I feel like, to fix those when they do. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, what kernel data structures are the most important for abstract or debugging purposes, um, being able to print the message, like what are the contents of the print K buffer We've got at, that. at any point in time because, you know, machines not coming up, mm -hmm. has there been anything written to the to the, the logs is the first thing I want to know. Yeah. Otherwise, have we not even gotten to that point kind of thing. Um, another thing that's very, that's painful in my current workflow that's potentially room for improvement with, with any of these approaches is um, generally, you know, I kind of run forward, miss what I was looking for, need to tear everything down and rerun all of it. So I have some pretty awful scripts that like launch QMU and then background it and then attach GDB to it and that's in a loop. And so if you quit out, it'll kill both and relaunch both. And I, I wish there was something nicer. I don't know. Like it. Okay. Let, let me, let me try to tackle. So the QMU and, and the GDB stub or GDB server sort of thing. I know there is an open issue on Dragon for GDB stub support. I'm not going to make any commitments on who's working on it or, or, or anything about that, uh, especially especially since Omar is not here to defend himself <laughs> or, or anyone else. So, but I know that's, that's on, the, on, on, on our radar as a really good target because that's a, a, great, a great way to at attach to a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, I find myself generally working with machines that yeah. don't work. Yeah. Trying to understand why. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> um, so for your second question about QMU or, or about just the setup script thing. Uh, this is something that I find interesting about Dragon is that like it is I'm, just... I'm imagining you'd code up like a script in Python and then you'd yeah. want to rerun that script. Yeah, right? uh, that's what, one of the things I find great about it is that it's just a general purpose programming language and yeah. Dragon is, is a library with the C library component that you just important like it. the existing kernel gdb scripts themselves are implemented in python if i understand correctly uh yeah yeah and what essentially happens is that gdb is the is the like primary right. and it open it, it links to libpython i believe and then but i'm also like super the like, the muscle memory of gdb and like the commands and like i want to uh -huh. see the register state i want to see the instruction i'm at yeah so yeah. like i i want that interface but i want something that can just generate a pretty printer for me and i'm going to dump this struct I'm not going to tell you ahead of time what format it's in. Here's mm -hmm. the address of it. You go look up the type information in Dwarf, and you tell me what it pretty printed. That is exactly exactly what the POC integration in, in GDB provides. Cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and for our part, you know, I've thought about, I, I love Crash. I sometimes uh, put together some code in like a, a, a Crash emulation sort of thing. But at the end of the day, Dragon is its own thing. It's it's not necessarily going to try to try to have your muscle memory in 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 GDB. But what it is going to do is give you an option to write code that looks kind of like what you would write in the kernel mm -hmm. to go through three levels of linked lists to find the structure and then print the one that matches what you like. And stuff that you can probably do in the GDB Python interface, but it just it, it's 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 targeted at that kind of debugging, maybe. I just did a bit of digging around for what it's worth, and while the only comment in GDB about anything like discontinuous stacks is a comment in the Go um, inferior information saying it split stacks when they were implemented, um, the, there is a the Python interfa interface does allow you to implement full-on winders in Python. Full on what? Full full uh, unwinders. unwinders. So it looks like you could you could implement discontinuous frame handling um, in using using just the, or almost just the GDB Python interface without hacking having to hack GDB itself. Okay. It's just no one's done it. Interesting. Funny. Uh, so. Whoop. So. Dragon has various levels of extensibility like that, and the the unwinder support is something that's only extensible at the C level, as far as I know. Uh, but other things, for instance, type formats, you can actually, uh, you know, 
similar to dwarf you could implement a, you could implement support for a type format to add type finders uh, that can look up say what is struct task struct if you had a if you had a pickle definition for it we could write a we could write a python implementation of that and load out uh, load up a pickle and get that that type information so similar for finding objects finding variables you can extend the dragon side of things in interesting ways from python or c but i don't think stack unwinders are there uh, they can always be added, you know. Yeah. Any feelings about? Uh, Does anyone, any of you actually have the use case for this kind of programmable debuggers? Because that's something that we, that. So, I mean, I was going to echo yeah. the, the I, I work with KGDB a whole lot, and I was going to echo the, you know, the GDB stub, using just GDB stub, I think, would also solve the KGDB uh, issue for, for working with Dragon. But at least for the poke stuff, that it sounds interesting, although I, I will say I, I tend to use the GDB scripts normally because they just magically are there when I build the kernel and use them. And I do wish they did more. Um, and so I don't know, the poke stuff does sound interesting because I do often end up while debugging, I have a linked list and I want to follow the linked list. And there's just at least no way that I know of to do it well. And so I you know, write really complicated GDB expressions where I calculate offset of myself in GDB and then you know, subtract it and do next myself to iterate through linked list. And it's all doable, but it's super complicated. And yeah, usually I give up. On. No, I, it's not that bad. You, you, once you start learning to use temporary GDB variables, it's yeah, it's okay, yeah. and you you know how to implement offset of is not that hard. But yeah, it, it I am too insane. stupid for for uh, <laughs> doing programmable stuff with 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 GDB, not with the Python interface that I have never used. The Python interface or GDB, at least for me, is super yeah, weird I, and confusing. I, I don't sp speak Python. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So definitely, definitely the linked list iteration thing is something that Dragon is exactly suited for. Uh, it's the sort of thing that, that someone has written uh, all of the linked lists offset of stuff for you, and it knows about the types, and it would just go ahead and do that for you without needing to know stuff. But it's still, if you don't speak Python, it could, no, could be a frustration. I, 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 only if I am forced to. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh. So yeah, that was poke support and dragon is what I just heard from Nick. Ah. Yes, poke support and dragon. I think bring the, bring, bring the warring camps together. Well, uh, I mean, there's no war here as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but what I I'm I'm excited because the the use case that Jose is talking about with poke for uh, payloads. You know, you've got an ELF file. I I want to. I'm I'm learning, you know, poke from you here and continuing on because I want to be able to dump an ELF header really fast. And, you know, that 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 data type isn't available in uh, in Dragon, and I would love to just pop open poke for that. There's probably some uh, some room for collaboration, but again, as as Dragon is a you know extensible or is a Python library, call out to poke, shell out to poke, uh, or or take the the buffer write it out to disk as a file, and suddenly you have an ELF file you can pop poke open with. Maybe it's not the workflow everyone loves. There's obviously a room for improvement always, but. Uh, some some misintegration will be not that difficult to do in the way, same way we integrate the poke in GDP, we can integrate it in Python as yeah. well. Yeah. And, and uh, a Python poke implementation could take all of those, those nice, uh, poke definitions for TCP headers, for, for ELF files, you could load those up into, into Dragon with the right plumbing code. So that, that this is all hypothetical here. I shouldn't say that it's implemented or anything, but those are, those are all options and they can unify in interesting ways. So I wanted to ask about the different trade-offs that um, GDV and Poke make versus Dragon. For example, when it comes to CPU and memory usage, right? Because sometimes you want to use these debuggers in production, right? And perhaps you don't mind that it's a bit slower as long as it uses less memory. But for example, I know that Dragon 
does like a heavily parallelization, parallelization with OpenMP and it does a lot of indexing, but I don't know, how do they compare in terms of memory and CPU? Well, I can't reply to that very, very quickly. Poke is extremely slow at the moment. And the reason for that is that um, it's very new. And we have been focused in the last couple of years in, 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 uh, in, you know, in functionality. Because, to, I mean, it, there are certain things. I mean, the, some of the things that Poke does, we did not know how to do them because there was nothing doing those things before. And we did not even know uh, if, it, if it was actually possible to do it. And some of this stuff is actually not uh, that clear. So it's, POC is very slow at the moment, yeah. We will release POC version 3 at the end of the summer, hopefully, which is better. But actually, we, I designed the compiler in a way that uh, what is now the back end is going to become a middle end. Right? But yeah, it will get faster. But right now, no, yeah, and of, for sure it cannot compete with a, the Python, a Python implementation, for sure not. Mm -hmm. to, to come at that, I certainly can't speak from the GDB Python uh, perspective, so I, I don't want to, to really make any comparisons. I don't know that we have benchmarks or something like that. But to your point, yes, Dragon, one of the things it does is it parallelizes uh, dwarf reading and loading with OpenMP because that can get really slow if you're looking at a ton of modules and uh, VM Linux and all of that jazz. And that is really noticeable. And I can say that Omar, it's funny, uh, in, in our pull requests, he'll, he'll tell me about the milliseconds regressions on loading Dwarf, on loading, loading debug info. So he, he knows about startup time regressions and he focuses on, on that, uh, at least in, in terms of startup how to get from not running to debugging a program with full debug info. That is something that, that he focuses on. For other things, you know, you have the Python implementation. So whichever Python implementation you have, they keep getting faster generally, but, and then a fair amount of it is written in C. But, you know, that, I don't know, where else to go on on performance, but those just pointers, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Thank you. Uh, one question to the both of you: uh, Which use cases do you see uh, Dragon and GDB Poke used most in? So, in the distros, we usually do dump debugging, but the way I understand it, Dragon is more designed for live debugging, or, or at least the build original goal was more for live debugging. Um, is there any limitations uh, towards dumps or other use cases you think the tools don't cope good with? Okay, um, so dump versus live. Uh, I mainly use Dragon myself for dump debugging rather than live debugging. Um, I think it might be the reverse for Omar or for others who are using it. Because one of its strengths, as you said, is kind of run in a live kernel and extract some data out of a, out of the kernel that you wouldn't find in a proc file system or something like that. But I can't, in terms of limitations, honestly, Dragon is going to be faster on a core dump, much faster, because proc K core is pretty darn slow to read from uh, versus a file that you can load and, and read very quickly. Um, it supports make dump file formatted crash dumps, it supports ELF formatted crash dumps. You might run into some issues with the more exotic crash dumps. If you if you have a, a hypervisor uh, memory dump, you might need to do some massaging with VM core info or something. Uh, and we're always looking at those uh, those GitHub issues because we want to support more of them. Uh, but that, that would be the, the first limitation that springs to my mind with dumps. As far as user space, though, they're generally all ELF files, and they're all pretty easily readable by uh, by a Dragon. So, and, um, and anything you want to add from the GDB poke side? Whatever GDB supports, okay, it's supported. Maybe when there's no other question, one for Dragon. Do you support cross-debugging, also cross-NDNS? 
So it's it cross platform, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, cross platform or oh, cross arch, uh, cross NDNS especially. Yeah. So Dragon is 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 implemented to so it has basic architecture support for a few uh, architectures, at least ARM sixty four, x eighty six, x eighty six sixty four, and I think several others. But uh, and it's also implemented with a with an eye towards you know byte ordering things those those sorts of things that are going to uh, affect your debugging. That said, some some several items aren't going to be as useful. Um, on another architecture, you might not have all of the helpers that you do um, on x86-64, but if you have a Dragon compiled on x86-64, it should be just as functional at reading an ARM64 uh, core dump as one compiled for ARM64. So for the cross-debugging side of things, yeah, uh, it should it should work on that. Um, what like Things like the ORC unwinder won't work nicely, of course, because there's no ORC, but, you know. Sure. Yeah, and we're and we're always and we're working on those uh, those architecture differences as well. We're we've uh, trying to improve. I know there are some folks uh, at Oracle too who are really interested in getting everything as as good as possible on ARM. So, yeah. as, long, as long as I'm generating insane ideas, I might point out that if some some of your problem with cross debugging with Dragon is that you can't execute the uh, assembler in some different instruction set. It was always queenu in emulation, so you could call out to that. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Uh, one one thing that, I mean, GDB does and Dragon will get there with live user space debugging, I think, and will probably, with if there's a GDB stub option, you'll probably have that as well for for kernel stuff that you might be able to do some limited starting and stopping, but it's not there now. And so we haven't even started about the idea of emulating instruction sets or any, uh, I, I wouldn't expect to see to see that sort of thing. Uh, reverse, the reverse debugging too. Reverse debugging. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you are gonna support like executing instruction forward, you should support executing backwards too. <laughs> like GDB does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we're, Definitely thinking a lot more along the lines of a crash dump where you have your memory, you have your your data that you want to extract, or a live system. Similarly, I know that there are that there are plans and 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 roadmaps that include the starting and stopping, but I don't know that we're ever going to be doing things like reverse emulating or forward emulating. GDB is great for that. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. It, it, unless we have any other subsystem specific ideas, things that people are looking for when that they find that are missing with crash, missing with GDB. All right. Yeah. I guess we're done. Thank you.